So what are the differences between a revocable and an irrevocable trust? When you watch this video all the way to the end, you're going to know how they compare, the advantages and disadvantages, and how to protect your assets when some big ugly process server knocks on your front door and puts a lawsuit in your hand. Thing has a big rip in it. Guess they don't make masks like they used to. You're going to know about estate planning so that when you die, those who you care about the most will receive your assets. And a big secret about how to amend an irrevocable trust if you change your mind. Hi, this is The Business Guy. I've been in the asset protection business since 1991. I believe we have over 65,000 clients and have established literally thousands of trusts and companies for other law firms, accountants, and members of the public. We have attorneys on staff, and you can visit us at assetprotectionplanners.com. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please click the like button and enter your comments. And you can also click the subscribe button so that when more videos come out like this, you'll get notified. So what is an irrevocable trust? An irrevocable trust is an agreement allowing property to be held by one party for the benefit of another, stipulating that it cannot be readily revoked, altered, or amended. It's commonly used for asset protection and estate planning. A trust is a legal tool that consists of a settler who has the trust created, a trustee who manages the trust, and one or more beneficiaries who benefit from the trust. You will also hear a settler referred to as a grantor or trustor. Then the next question we answer is about revocable versus irrevocable trusts and how they compare. Revocable versus irrevocable trusts. Okay, so what is a revocable trust? It's commonly referred to as a revocable living trust. It is an estate planning tool that a settler can change at any time. So if your needs change, you can make amendments freely without the interaction of a third party. So why doesn't everybody set up a trust that's revocable as opposed to an irrevocable one? It is because a living trust is part of your own estate for tax and asset protection purposes. So a revocable trust offers little protection from creditors or those who seek to sue you. It also offers no segregation of assets in order to qualify for Medicaid assistance. Plus, upon your death, such a revocable trust is yours for state and federal tax purposes. So why irrevocable? The primary reason people use the irrevocable trust is to protect assets from lawsuits. Legal theory commonly allows a creditor to step into the shoes of the debtor. It allows the creditor to do what he or she could do. For example, let's say a settler of a trust could freely change the beneficiary. The one who sued the settler could step into his or her shoes and change the beneficiary to himself. If the trust allowed the settler to independently spend trust assets on himself, the creditor could step into his shoes and do the same. Plus, some people who use irrevocable trust do so to make sure others carry out their wishes when they're no longer around. This is common in second marriages where a spouse wants to make sure that children from the first marriage get at least some of the assets. So you mean I can't ever change it? Well, it's not quite like that as there are often ways to make changes. It depends on how the trust is drafted. But if the purpose is asset protection, the changes often require the approval of a third party, such as the trustee. Most trusts for this purpose are called discretionary trusts. So for example, if you decide to cut out a beneficiary or add a new one, simply ask the trustee. The trustee, such as our law firm, at its discretion, can do so. The trustee has discretion to decide whether or not the act would be in the best interest of the trust and its beneficiaries, and if doing so would put the trust assets in harm's way. You know, things like this baby Yoda cookie. Or maybe like this dog. My dog. He's a good dog. Or like this boat. That boat. That one right there. That one. Now with most irrevocable trusts, the settlers or beneficiaries may request that the trustee make certain changes. The trustee can generally do so if it does not put trust assets at risk. Now to say it another way, if you could change it directly, the judge could force you to change the beneficiary to your legal enemies. So by making it irrevocable, you are much more likely to get what you want, the use of the trust assets. So by requiring third-party intervention, it ties the judge's hands from directly forcing you 
to make changes against your will. Now, there are many kinds of irrevocable trusts. The best trusts for asset protection from lawsuits are in the Cook Islands or in the Caribbean island of Nevis. Our law firms there step in to protect assets as needed. Your local courts don't have jurisdiction over the Cook Islands or Nevis, and that is why we have seen it as the very best asset protection tool on the planet. Now, not all irrevocable trusts are for asset protection. There are trusts to hold life insurance for charitable purposes, to reduce the tax bite, and to care for those with special needs. Let's talk about allowances for the unforeseen. Now, properly drafted trusts allow for a wide range of future possibilities. For example, are there circumstances that would warrant a change of beneficiaries or trustees? Sure there are. Perhaps mom and dad unexpectedly have another child. One child exhibits evidence of long-term substance abuse. One child has a tragic military accident while the parents are still living. The trustee dies. A well-drafted trust addresses all of these circumstances. So how can it be irrevocable if I can really change it? Now notice the operative word, I. Irrevocable doesn't necessarily mean that nobody on the planet can change it. It doesn't mean that you cannot suggest a change to somebody else. It just means that certain people cannot independently, without outside cooperation, change it. And this is a good thing. Remember, if you could change the beneficiary at a whim, the judge could force your whim to be your enemy at law. Now, we all like control, but if the trust is written improperly and you have the power to change the trust, then you will likely get creamed in the courtroom. At that point, the judge would be the only one who would have the control, and that would likely not be a good thing for you. That's because he'll force you to use that control and change the beneficiary to the one who sued you, and that will allow them to take all the money held therein in order to satisfy the judgment. So to have real control, set up an irrevocable trust with an independent trustee. Then you put yourself in control instead of the guy who is suing you. Now you can get more information on how they work, how they're used, and what they do by calling Asset Protection Planners at 1-800-830-1055 or by visiting assetprotectionplanners.com. And please remember to click the like button. This is The Business Guy.